Hey guys, today we're going to talk about troubleshooting a furnace pressure switch. I wanted to expand on our recent furnace troubleshooting series by going into each part of the sequence of operation of a furnace. In this video, I'm going to fill you in on what the pressure switch does and why it's important. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you five easy things to check when you're troubleshooting a furnace pressure switch. That's coming up today here on Fox Family Heating and Air. Hey, if this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. First, as a technician, you have to know the sequence of events that occurs for a gas furnace to start up properly. It's really straightforward, and you should have this memorized before you can even consider being qualified to troubleshoot. So you got power to the furnace control board, the thermostat signals the call for heat, the inducer motor kicks on, pressure switch proves that the inducer motor is operating correctly, the igniter activates, the gas valve energizes, flame pours across the burners, the flame sensor proves that all the burners are lit, and then the blower forces air through the duct system. First, the inducer motor starts. When a furnace begins a new cycle, the inducer motor is the first thing that you should see kick on. 120 volts is applied through the wires coming from the control board. This starts the inducer motor for up to 60 seconds before anything else even happens. It's a safety feature that creates a negative pressure or draft which purges the heat exchanger of any poisonous gases, namely the byproducts of combustion. It makes the air inside the hollow tubes of the heat exchanger cleaner when the flame kicks on. When we have cleaner air inside the heat exchanger at the time of combustion, the efficiency of the furnace increases. Next, a safety device called the pressure switch activates when the diaphragm inside of it recognizes the suction or purging action of the inducer motor. The pressure switch is a normally open switch that closes upon the manufacturer's specifications for required negative pressure. If the inducer motor turns on and it's working normally, the pressure switch should activate. There's really no time lag in this either. The inducer motor creates this draft pretty quickly, within five to seven seconds in most cases, and the rest of the furnace starts up from there. If the pressure switch doesn't activate, the furnace will then shut down, wait a bit, and then try again. If the pressure switch doesn't close after three to five tries, the control board will stop sending voltage to the inducer motor, essentially locking it out from attempting it anymore. You can tell the system is on some sort of safety lockout when the furnace's fan or blower pushes room temperature air through the ducts and into your rooms. No one likes cool air blowing into their house in the heating season, so this happens to alert the occupant that the system isn't working right and that they should call the HVAC company to come out and troubleshoot the furnace. Let's talk about how to troubleshoot a furnace pressure switch. So let's assume that the inducer motor is running properly, but the pressure switch doesn't seem to be closing. With your meter, you can trace the 24 volts coming from the control board through the safeties and onto the pressure switch. Place one lead on ground or a solid piece of metal that's attached to the furnace. Place the other on the incoming terminal of the switch. If you have 24 volts on the incoming terminal, but not at the terminal leaving the switch, you can assume that the pressure switch is not closed. Another way of doing this is testing with your leads across the two terminals of the pressure switch. When the pressure switch is open, your meter will read 24 volts across it. When the pressure switch closes, you'll read zero volts. Remember, the pressure switch doesn't close until the inducer motor comes on and provides the necessary suction for the pressure switch to close. The required suction is listed on the pressure switch too. If the pressure switch is not closing, when we're troubleshooting a furnace pressure switch, we can do a few things. We can take our manometer and make sure that the inducer motor is creating a vacuum by hooking up the meter's hose directly to the collection chamber that the pressure switch tubing is connected. Take that pressure hose off and then put your manometer hose on the same port. Once you put the hose on and you start the system up, the inducer motor comes on and the manometer should start reading the induced draft as it begins to rise. This number on the meter needs to be greater than the number on the pressure switch. So if you're testing a pressure switch that closes at negative 0.7 inches water column, then the suction being read by the meter should be around, say, negative one inch water column. It could be less, it could be more, but it can't be less than the number on the pressure switch. 
meaning if you're reading negative 0.4 inches water column, something is causing the pressure switch vacuum to be low. So now I want to talk about five easy things to check on your furnace pressure switch. Some of the more common reasons that I've seen pressure switches either fail or not close to allow the rest of the system to fire up are one, a clogged port on the collection chamber or the pressure switch, two, an obstruction in the flue pipe, three, a diaphragm in the pressure switch that's ruptured or stuck, four, the pressure switch hose is damaged, number five, the pressure switch hose has water in it. A clogged port on the collection chamber to the pressure switch. So on the collection chamber, check to see if the port itself is clear of any calcium deposits, dirt, or other debris that would prevent air from flowing through that port. If there is, take a small wire, like some thermostat wire, and clean that port out. Whatever the substance is, it should be brittle enough to be scraped off, allowing the port to become clear. Next, an obstruction in the flue pipe. Remember, the inducer motor causes a draft to allow the gases to be drawn out of the heat exchanger and into the flue pipe where it terminates outside the building, usually the rooftop. I have found that bees, wasps, and birds like to build their nest in and around the flue pipe. It's not likely to happen during the winter time, but it sure can happen over the summer. So if the season is early and the furnace hasn't been run yet, it's good to check at the roof vent. It's also not uncommon to see that the nest or the bird has fallen all the way down the pipe to the base of it where the pipe meets the furnace. Next up, a diaphragm can be ruptured or stuck. Commonly, the pressure switch fails because the diaphragm inside the casing has become stuck or ruptured. Ruptured diaphragms can sometimes make a flapping noise. Stuck diaphragms just won't budge on the required draft. Sometimes a little tap with your finger uh, on the flat part of the casing will free the stuck part, and that's great, but your switch is on borrowed time, and nine times out of 10, that switch will fail again. When? Well, if I tell you it'll fail tomorrow, it'll last for years. If I tell you it'll last for years, it'll fail tomorrow. Personally, I would recommend trying to convince the customer to replace the pressure switch now so there's no surprises in the future. One way to see the pressure switch is stuck open or closed is to breathe lightly into the hose leading to the pressure switch. You'll hear the diaphragm open and close. Uh, it doesn't mean that the pressure switch will work properly, but it gives you more information to troubleshoot a furnace pressure switch. Because these things are almost impossible to rebuild, a new pressure switch needs to be ordered. A pressure switch hose can be damaged. There have been diagnostic service calls that I've been on where I could tell the port was clean, the flue pipe was clear, the inducer motor was pulling a proper draft, and the diaphragm was functional, but the pressure switch would still not send 24 volts across to the other terminal. Is the hose itself in good condition? Because rats love to chew these hoses up and leave holes in them. Other hoses can become brittle and crack. Keep some extra tubing in your service van for cases like this. Another thing that could be going on with the tubing to the pressure switch is water could be stuck inside of it. Condensing furnaces send the flue gases up the pipe, but latent heat will turn that gas into moisture that flows back down the flue pipe and into the inducer motor assembly. Remember that naturally flowing water flows downwards. If there's a low spot in the hose leading to the pressure switch, you'll find it won't close. Try draining the hose by unplugging it from the port. Just be careful because there can be a lot of water in that hose, so maybe have a bucket handy. During the pressure switch installation, you wanna make sure that it's mounted in the correct position. The pressure switch you took out was in a vertical position for a reason. Diaphragms don't activate as easily when they have to fight gravity. One time, I replaced a pressure switch with a universal and mounted it horizontally, parallel with the ground. And the switch failed a few days later. Of course, it didn't happen when I tested it the day that I installed it, but another tech had to come out and fix the problem a few days later. This could have been avoided had I read the section in the installation instructions that said not to mount it in a horizontal position. So I never did that again. OEM switches will usually just screw right back into their old spot, but universals sometimes need to be creatively mounted. This means that you might need to use a longer hose to get to the pressure switch which is another good reason to have extra hose on your van. And make sure that there's no dips in the hose either so that water doesn't accumulate, causing the switch to fail again in a couple days. 
So let's just recap. When a furnace begins a new cycle, the inducer motor is the first thing that you should see kick on. A safety device called a pressure switch activates when the diaphragm inside of it recognizes the suction or purging action of the inducer motor. The pressure switch is a normally open switch that closes upon the manufacturer's specifications required negative pressure. If the pressure switch closes normally, the rest of the furnace sequence of operations will continue. If the pressure switch will not close, the system will go into a safety mode. Try a couple more times and eventually just start blowing cold air into your room, letting you know that something's wrong with your furnace. Be patient and check all the things that we went over today before condemning a pressure switch. It could be one of a few things. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Condensing furnaces send flue gases up the pipe, but <laughs> you're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.